Confused about the cosmos? Can't tell a planet from a star? Then give us just five minutes and we'll show you what they are. Jack Horkheimer, Stargazer, tells you all about the night sky and the biggest show of all, the universe. And now, this week's episode. A lion at night and plenty of planets in the dawn's early light. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, outreach astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory, and I'll be your guide to the sky this month on Stargazer. Now that the weather is warm enough for you to spend a little time outside in the early evening without your long johns, I'd like to suggest that sometime during this lovely month of May, you go out and get a good look at the most famous constellation of spring, which for thousands of years has been associated with royalty and regal majesty, Leo the Lion. Plus, the two brightest planets, Venus and Jupiter, will meet in the pre-dawn sky next week, and they'll be joined by two more planets. Here, let me show you. Okay, we've got our skies set up for any clear night an hour or two after sunset. During May, facing south, where approximately two-thirds of the way up from the horizon, you will see the stars which make up the very ancient star pattern we call Leo. He is frequently shown as a reclining sphinx with his two paws out in front of him. And I'm sure that many an ancient Egyptian drew a correlation between this heavenly sphinx and their earthly monumental statue. A very bright backward question mark or sickle-shaped group of stars marks his head and mane, plus a bright triangle of stars marks his rear. Leo's brightest star, Regulus, which means the little king, marks the place where this heart should be. In fact, Regulus's second, though lesser known name in Latin is Cor Leonis, which means the heart of the lion. The Roman Pliny referred to it as the royal one, and in ancient Greece it was called the king star. But what our ancestors couldn't know about this royal heart of the king of the beast, and what modern astronomy tells us, is that it is a fast spinning, which means bulging star, almost four and a half times as wide as our million mile wide sun. But Regulus is much hotter than our yellow sun, and it shines blue white hot, and is 150 times brighter. And while it takes only eight and a third minutes for the light of our sun to reach Earth, Regulus is so far away that it takes its light 79 years to reach us. How's that for royal grandeur? The second brightest star of Leo is in the triangle that makes up his rear end. It marks Leo's tail and is appropriately named Denebola, which means the lion's tail. It too is a great star, although not as great as Regulus, being only one and a half times the size of our sun and 12 times brighter. But it's only half as far as Regulus, and Denebola's light takes only 36 years to reach us. And about two fists down and to the left of Denebola is a strange looking double star. It's not really a double star, it's the planet Saturn close by a star named Purima. Saturn is about two moon widths away from Purima now, and by early June will be half that distance from it. So keep an eye on Saturn and Purima over the next few weeks. I'll be telling you more about them in upcoming shows. Meanwhile, for you early birds, there will be four planets that you might see in the early morning sky before dawn if you have a clear flat horizon and the clouds cooperate. This will be a toughie, and if you miss it, you'll have to wait until September 2040 to have a chance like this again. So let me show you. Sunday morning, May 8th, about 45 minutes before sunrise, look east just above the horizon. The brightest planet, Venus, will be about three degrees to the right of the biggest planet, Jupiter. Mercury will be just below Venus, and dimmer Mars will be off to the left of Jupiter. Look every morning next week, and they will move closer, with Jupiter and Venus at their closest on Wednesday the 11th. Once again, Sunday the 8th, Monday the 9th, Tuesday the 10th, and Wednesday the 11th. Then they will separate and Venus and Jupiter won't be nearly this close again until May of 2013. Mercury and Mars will be especially tough to see. Binoculars might help, so give it a try. The regal lion Leo in the evening and a planet party in the morning sky next week. Keep looking up.